to the tournament floor for a game. It's the final match between Na'Vi and Alliance. Winner will be taking home the championship. Best of luck to both, both teams and enjoy the games. Alliance versus 2011 international champions, Na'Vi. Everything hangs in the balance. It all comes down to this. One more game, $2 million on the table. Winner, first place at the international, the Aegis and the prestige of being the best Dota 2 team in the world. The loser, second place and only 600,000. And here we go, Lumi. And it wouldn't be appropriate if we didn't have another Wisp. Alliances well, Wisp has a 100% win rate. In, in the, the grand, grand finals. In grand finals, and Lions takes it. So by statistics, can we just go home or we? If, if we were Bruno, we'd just say show's over, folks. But right. we're casters. We're going to stick with it. So they get a wisp. They actually, the reply from Navi was identical this game. They pick up Bat, then they pick up Alk. Same draft that we saw before. Alliance, the reply, same from them as well. They go for profit. It has an remaining. eerie feeling about it. They're on the same sides. It's the same draft thus far. Five Will these paths remaining. diverge? I think they already have, actually. I feel like we're watching a scrim. Like, you know how teams practice against each other and say, you know what, we want to practice one strategy, you want to practice other strategy, let's keep everything the same and let the play decide itself. But hell of a scrim. Hell of a friggin' scrim. Scrim with $1.4 million on the line. For first, and then $2 million total if you factor in second. It's a lot of money. But Navi have already broken the mold. Last game, they went third pick Puck. This oh. game, they go Rubik. And then the reply, Ake's Crystal Maiden, now Navi in the last phase of the previous draft, Enigma was banned. Puppy could not get his hands on it. This time around, he will not be denied. He's got his Enigma. An Enigma pick up here on fourth is not a bad, not a bad order to go about it because both, I mean, Alliance has shoulder support. So you know exactly what you get, way, you get away with, whether he needs a BKB, whether he wants to go blink. So Alliance need to pick up something Ten that could actually three. pierce through a BKB. And I gotta say, S4 play the Beastmaster in game Five number one wasn't the best play because so much actually focused onto him, but I mean, why not? I think Beastmaster is a pickup here, but no, oh. he wants to go with the puck. Oh, now this is looking good, Lumi. On one side, we've got what looks to be a Dendi bat, and on the other, we've got the S4 puck. At long last, we're gonna get a real showdown in the mid lane. Two heroes that can snowball. Two heroes that can find early kills. Two of the best gankers in the game. Mm -hmm. Oh, get excited for this. All right, so a couple things real fast. Navi Five needs to pick up a little bit more burst damage. Last game, Alliance, you saw the Wisp surviving for quite a bit, even with the He's Flaming Lasso. Time. So I think they need to get burst damage to actually pierce through the Wisp and kill him immediately. At the same time, oh. Alliance for the last draft need to get some damage output Alliance because if BKB ends up being on the Alchemist and on Nygma, there is just no Navi damage output at all pick. coming out from Alliance. And, and Puck does not transition as well into a semi-carry role as exactly. a Night Stalker. Now, Nature's Prophet does give you some damage, but he, he uh, gets it much later. Uh, there is an anti-mage in the pool here. And uh, we have seen a lot of teams in the past, when they really need a win, they turn to anti-mage. Gyro's been banned out. Loda doesn't normally play PL without a Coddle. What are they going to pick for Loda? Anti-mage. PA. There is a CK, there's a tiny, I mean, there's the classic Wisp sure, partners, yeah. but there's options. Five they don't farm that mean. well, generally speaking. Tiny does eventually, but CK not so much. Yeah, with the wide, uh, wide hero pool that Loda has, it's really, really hard to predict. Meanwhile, Navi, of course, needing Funnix hero, although it's not set just yet. Batrider was played by Funnix last game, and uh, maybe they pick up Dendi. Assassin. Wow! Dendi. Templar Assassin! Oh, but Dendi! Oh, but Dendi! We're gonna see a Dendi TA mid, and TA, by the way, does very well against Puck. Oh, she this does. This is a tough matchup. This is gonna be hard for S4. That puts Funnic into the jungle as bat, and now Alliance, their final chip on the table. It's all in on this low to last pick. What's it gonna be? I have no freaking clue. I have no freaking Ten clue. Loda, what's he thinking of here? Is it a Sven? Is it a Tiny? Is it a CK? Five is it an Anti-Mage? They're showing his max kills, his max GPM. Can't go out. That's not an option. What's I think against do? Templar Assassin, of the heroes that you listed, Tiny is probably the best. But CK. no, they got to go with Chaos Knight. So with Chaos Knight for the final game of the international number three, both teams trying to go home with $1.4 million. And of course, the and lovely that. Aegis. And that. 
That one matters. To these players, in some ways, it may matter more than the money. Not that the money isn't nice, but they want to be known as the best. Not second best, not close, but the best. And to be the best, you've got to win this game. It's game five of a best of five. Alliance versus Navi. Two million dollars at stake. There's no more games to fall back on. There's no more second chances. You win or you finish second. And here we go. It's tense. It's tense. Indeed. There's a palpable air running. in this crowd. Everybody's just waiting with bated breath. And I mean, obviously, they're just Five strategizing. We're going to see Dendi on the Templar Assassin. We're definitely going to see Puppy on the Enigma. Kuroki going to handle his world famous Rubik. Batrider is going to go to Funig. And last but not least, Havos. He's been playing Alchemist all day long, hasn't he? Yeah, he's yeah. been playing a lot of Alchemist. Yeah. Of course, this is another game of Dota, right? It's still Dota in the end. Two million dollars on the table, but it's a very big game of Dota. Na'Vi, the, the, the International One champions, they've attended now three grand finals. Can they make a second championship theirs? Can they take another home? Havos the Alp, Funnick the Bat, Kuroki on the Rubik, Dendi the TA mid, and last but not least, Puppy on the Jungle Enigma. Our first ever Game 5 at the International on the side of the Alliance. The Kings in the North yet to lose a series at this tournament. They've lost a few games in a row here, but they battled back to force this game. S4 on his signature puck. EGM, the EO, the Wisp, Ake, the Crystal Maiden, Loda on the Chaos Knight, and they're heading to the bottom lane. Last but not least, it's Admiral Bulldog expecting to go 1v1 against the Funic Bat, starting with a Magic Stick, heading to the top lane. So Loda and his team decides to go offensive trialing with the Wisp. Now Wisp generally considered very weak on the offensive trialing because he has zero armor, but I think they're definitely on the offensive. And let's see if Havos and of course with Kuroki's backup, whether he could handle it. Back in the mid lane, Dendi is going to have a little bit of assistance. Puppy will destroy the first the creep begins. with demonic conversion, and that should be a tiny kind of a assistance there. And of course, he is going to be matched up against S Force Puck. By the way, no polling here, so this is a as true of a one v one as it possibly gets. Yeah, nice work by Bulldog here. Sends a trance to the top rune. Will deny the creep, oh. and meanwhile, Havos. bottom lane, Havos. they're hunting Havos, but. Yeah. Unable to pick him off. He's way off. So, aggressive tri lane, and the reason this really could work is because Navi are running a jungle enigma. So, at best, it's a dual lane bottom. And in fact, it won't be a dual lane bottom. Kuroki's gone. You want to get a first blood top. I don't think Admiral Bulldog was expecting this at all. Yeah, this, this lane could get first blood, but really not until level two, I feel. Let's see, though. Maybe if you, you can run him down with Napalm. If you get like four stacks on him, just with Napalms oh. and right clicks, it could do it. One there's, stack? There's not many stacks now. They're going to have to really wait for this. Two stacks. Meanwhile, Alliance, they didn't ward the pull camp. It seems like they want Navi to go for the pulls, expecting Kuroki to be there and then kill him, but he's not. They just have vision. So Havos sitting back. Both teams at the tense moment. A first blood could very well decide this game. Such snowball-oriented lineups on both sides. Ooh. Mid lane here, Dendi dropping out a ton of harass with the side blades. Last it denies, and of course, a ton of harassment. Now S4. This four. is a very hard matchup for Puck. TA is going to have the better damage as you level up the refraction. And ultimately, S4 cannot kill a TA by himself unless he gets a big rune. And Dendi gets ganked, uh, overextends hugely, unless there's another hero in support. So Dendi's going to have an edge mid in the mid lane. That could be huge. They're trying to force this first blood top. It's not going to happen, though. Kuroki, in the end, will back off. Yeah, so Amber Bottom Bulldog. lane, bottom lane. Havos on the run gets oh, pulled into no. a tether. He's channeling a stun, but he's been locked in position. Dropping oh, fast, not oh. dead yet. Loda's low. Loda is going to die. Havos. Havos drops the first blood. Amber Bulldog going for the kill right now. Tether to break the trees. Tango up here by Havos. He's EGM. got a juke. He's EGM's got a low. Oh. is low. Of a Havos, is he really going to do oh it? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Havos. Havos. is simply too damn good. 1v4. He finds two. He does fall, but man. Not B. Talk about a clutch play there. That is so huge. That could just win them the game. That one moment right there. I'm shaking my head in disbelief. They're tri-laning against an alchemist. Alchemist is not good at the early levels. He's got two armor. He's got 700 HP. 
Just great juki. Ooh, they're now they're going one to more get time. once more. They'll go for a boat. The one second stun. The luck not with them. He's Another got magic stick. Magic stick. Four charges. Can he get to the trees? He's he will. Live. He's going to be saved. Tango. He's, He's going to live. Balls. They're the still balls. going for this oh, bulldog. God. Tango. Oh, God. The jukes. So much juke for the trees being destroyed. One more stun. He's still juking to the right side. Tower. EGM. EGM's low. Can you get the kill on EGM? Oh, my He's God. got another tether oh, here. spray. Acid spray. Gets the kill. Havos. So they're quad laning bottom. Let's just call it what it is. It's a quad lane. That's two Bulldog TPs to the bottom lane. They have four heroes bottom, and he is leading three to two. And meanwhile, Dendy's 1v1 mid. He's winning his lane handily, 11 and 10 already. And Funic, free farm top lane. There's nobody here. Puppy, he's got the jungle to himself. He's just rubbing his palms together. Alliance is really shooting themselves in the foot, and Havost is putting them in a horrible position. Well, they got to keep up the aggression right now. I mean, Kuroki is pretty much a free kill if you get that tether in. But uh, so far, they don't find it. Meanwhile, Hovos just picking him items after items. The Boots of Speed pickup, as well as the Magic Stick uh, pickup after his death, was absolutely huge. And a lot of them survived long enough so that Tower could do the rest. But let's quickly check out the mid lane. You were saying that Dendi was leading quite a bit. And look at the CS difference 15 and 13. He's crushing this lane. He's got 14 denies against the range hero. Look at the level disparity already. Dendi versus the Puck. He's a full level ahead. He's halfway to six. S4, not even halfway to five. And once Ooh, they want to one more time on the bottom lane, Havos down to about half HP. Pops a magic wand quite early, drops the stun. Need to get a lift. There's a lift. Defensive toss back. And Navi stays there once again. Havos lives yet again. They keep on trying to find kills. When you run an aggressive tri lane wisp, when you run an aggressive tri lane in general, you need to get those kills. They were up against nothing but an Alk. It felt like it should have been easy, but Havos just outplayed them. Absolutely outplayed them. And now Alliance, it's still close in terms of gold experience. It's not out of reach by any means, but this lineup really does rely on getting ahead, and they're behind. Navi is looking so masterful right now. Well, Navi, you know when they're ahead, they definitely want to apply pressure. And they, the pressing question is, when is that pressure going to come? Is it going to come from Dendi? Is it going to come from Funic? Or is it going to come from Enigma, from his pushes? As well, Jungle Hovo says, all right, I had, I had it all on the bot lane. I'm, I'm rotating. I'm ganking he, he does have two CS. I guess that's the one good piece of news, but that's about it, Luby. And he's not the, he's not a, oh, it's not a four protect one. They have Dendi mid on TA. They have plenty of other damage. So they don't need Havos to be the hard carry. Simply Dendi dropping acid tower. spray, throwing out stun. Dendi can carry this game. He's going for the phase boots. He's got his magic wand coming soon. And with this kind of start, 26 and 17, they need to gank him. But their lineup isn't that good at ganking TA. Their refraction charges are going to be a real pain for them to deal with. Yeah, Crystal Maiden's Frostbite is going to be their best spell to get that gank off. But she is so slow that if she makes a gank at TA, TA kills her. So. Yeah, I think Alliance is definitely out of options. Now, we've seen Alliance in this position in the past where early game they struggle, but mid game they always, always come back. And it's going to be on the back of an S4 Puck. I have, I have absolute confidence that we're going to see a lot more better fights out of S4. But he's losing his lane. He's 19 and 3. Denny's 29 oh, come and 18. On. Lane's overrated. S4 is S4. He is really losing his lane, though. This is going to be tough for him. Not yet level 6. Nowhere near a blink. He can't even get the roots because oh, the boast is denying him at every corner. More things going Navi's way. Funic, level six as well. He's got 900 gold. Once he gets a blink, you look at Alliance and just look at these heroes. Ake, no Ogre Club for him, no Tranquil Boots. Sitting with 500 HP. Ooh, the they, Wisp. They want Loda. Nothing. They want Loda. Loda's gonna get lifted. He's gonna get tossed back. We're gonna see a stun to the face. Malefice on top as well. And Loda being left alone. Four seconds stun, trying to get the kill. He's not gonna do it. Oh, Bulls. Oh, nice pickup by Alliance. Nice pickup. Great pick up by them, but Loda dies as a Chaos Knight. This hero does not flash farm. This hero does not really catch up from farm. So dying there, a huge loss nonetheless. Havos falls, but Dendi's still farming. Funic's still farming. Puppy's still farming. And we're so used to when Alliance is winning, Loda gets off to a hot start and never looks back. He's being shut down right now. 30 and 8 for his net worth. Top lane, they want Funic. Funic gets relocated back here, and Funic just melts to the pressure. Can you make it out alive? He's Magic Snow. Dead. No. Big kill for the Alliance. All of a sudden, EGM's level 5. He's close to level 6. That was an off lane bat who was level 7. I mean, getting that. The, the gold is nice, but the experience, the big thing there. Yeah, unfortunately, he did not have a Magic Stick or a point into his Flame Break, so he basically had no defense mechanism Andy. against that. Going in on S4. He's not killing him, but again, continue to zone him off the lane, winning in terms of farm, 
He's prepping with the traps. S4, gotta be careful Have here. we ever seen S4 be this pressure in a true 1v1? There's no pulling, there's no ganks. It's just standing straight up 1v1ing and outplaying S4. It's, it's the matchup. I mean, yeah. TA really does crush Puck 1v1. And you have no way to remove a fraction. You don't have as much damage as the as the TA, and he's not getting ganked. So without that, I mean, they need they'll need the wisp. They'll need the profit to get involved to catch up. And orbs being tossed out, trying to push the lane back. Then he's gonna blind check top here. Hopefully, he finds himself a rune, and it's gonna be in bot lane. Of course, Puppy's already on top of that. Oh, well, watch out! Ooh, Puppy's on the hunt. Ooh, There's a lot of traps here. S4 heading down the river. He gets Malphus back. Oh. Black hole as well, and S4 will fall. Another kill for Navi. Oh my goodness, every single lane being decimated by Na'Vi. Are we gonna see a two-time champion? It's a little early yet, Lumi. It's close though. Leading in terms of gold, leading in terms of experience. Alliance will need to dig deep here. It's a triple gauntlet build from EGM. Pure tank. He wants to live through the burst. He knows it's coming. And now with Black Hole down, Radiant's they do have Phantasm here on Loda. They will have Relocate soon. Alliance, they'll need to rely on ganks to get back in this game. Because when it comes to farm, a boast, he'll get Grievel's Greed very soon, I imagine. And he'll start catching up. The rest of them are out farming Alliance right now. Yeah, we have seen how Alliance snowballs. They were behind before. Keep in mind, last Radiant's game, top tower after one five-man wipe, they just win the game off that. So Alliance definitely very much so still in the game. EGM got to get the level Radiant's 6, though. So he needs to turn back to the jungle. Jungle with the Crystal Maiden and, and hit that six. The first tower for the Alliance falls top. The tier one is down. And now they can go back, continue to pull, get that Wisp a level six and go for some ganks. They'll have a Bulldog Midas, so that tower pretty important in that regard. Still though, it does feel like Na'Vi worked very comfortable giving it up. Did not force the defense. They're waiting on some next items. Funnick, his Blink Dagger coming soon. Puppy, mech not too far off. He's about 1,200 gold away. Dendi, close to his next item. And I think this is a BKB game to me. We'll see what Dendi wants to go for, but here we go. Relocate on Elbows, trapped in position. This time, does he get out? Uh-uh, not that easy. Alliance strikes back with a vengeance. Five to five, and a much needed kill. They continue to shut the south down. A momentary lapse in Havos' judgment. See, does not see Havos turn level six, and that, that was yeah. an instant game. EGM just hit level six yeah. there. Very quick relocate. Now we'll go for an urn. And hey, Loda, no time wasted in farming. Chaos Knight's not a great farmer, but when you have Wisp, you spend less time on the gas. Yeah, when you're participating in those kills and you get those kills, yeah, it, it helped you farm quite a bit. Meanwhile, Kuroki is level six as well, so we saw a game where last time he did not get anything done because he was getting picked off. This game, he's got a quick level six, and what are some of the good spells that he can steal this game? Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing to point out is, sure, Havost is getting shut down, but to me, Navi and Alliance both are winning when their supports have the hot start. And right now, Puppy's level eight, Kuroki's level six, they're both having a hot start. I think after the Arcane Moots, well, Kuroki, maybe just tank up a little bit, get your magic wand, work towards your Blink Dagger. Puppy will go mech, and once they get that next level of items, finding pickoffs gets really easy for them. Yeah, I mean, Kuroki could tank up or he could get a Blink. And I am more leaning towards a blink. We'll see. Yeah. He's got a lot of options here. He'll wait. He'll bite his time. There are other heroes to initiate as well. There's Funnick to jump in first. There's nothing that big to steal an alliance. Maybe Dream Call or Silence. But I think the big thing is just to stay alive and find a good jump. Five heroes mid for Na'Vi. They love to fight early. They love to fight constantly. And they're hunting S4. Ooh. There's a blink. A lasso as well. Locked in place and just look at it melt. Oh, Aki, you're in the wrong neighborhood. One more trap's going to do Malphus on top. They're backing off because there's a huge backstab from Loda. Oh, EGM's going to get... Oh, there's the kill. And now Loda in huge trouble. Can they have traps? Can they have sun? Meanwhile, Loda somehow finds a double kill. Oh. The sun comes out. Aki, okay, a couple back more the hits, fight. But it's a two-second sun. Aki still Live Kuroki on the back line trying to get the right glow. The zap from Kuroki. They're not done just yet. Dendi trying to get the mail strike. He finds it. Kuroki. Up a Dendi. Up a Dendi. Out of his mind right now. In comes S4. There's a stun from a boss with his dying wish. Oh. Dendi, though, will fall. And immediately the Alliance replies. But they do buy back on Loda. A costly defense for them. Oh my goodness, I thought I thought he was gonna Mel Strike dodge that stun, but of course there was a Sentry Ward down, so Alliance getting some critical kills, tier 1 tower under siege right now, Funic, ooh, shift Q on the blink, but they are not done defending this. There's no lasso here, the orb was stolen, oh, Kuroki! 
what a play! He's caught as far as far! Orbi now, still alive, even better, he replies, still standing strong! Funnick, one more hit, not enough, he will not die! Too dead for Na'Vi! And S4 is really playing with fire here. How does he live? How does he live? With all these frequent team fights, very, very hard to judge who's actually ahead. Want to take a stab at it, LD? It's so close. I, I don't think there's a clear advantage. It comes down to the next level of fights. It comes down to the next items. Dead even, both teams going blow for blow. Radiance Who's going to win the bigger fights, attack. though? I think the one thing to consider, Navi, very close to key items. Mech on Puppy coming very soon. They've got Black Hole. We didn't see it in that last fight. And then you look at some of these other heroes. Havost is very poor, but Dendi's working towards the BKB. So looking at the items for Navi, I'd say they've got the items to fight now, whereas Alliance, they're more focused on farming, and the items that they need are going to take longer. You have a lot of gold on Bulldog, and it's going into a Shadow Blade. So if Navi continue to fight with those items, they're ahead. If they don't, then Alliance could easily come back. Yeah, and like you said, Navi definitely looking to fight right now, because once the mech is up on Puppy, we saw how close that team fight was in the mid lane. And if you pop the mech, that is a 250 HP heal. That's a ton of armor per activation. So I think Navi can take an engagement. They've got to focus down on this Tier 1 tower, though, because that will open their gank path by quite a bit. And there's your mech on Puppy. That's a big item to pick up. He's actually your lead farmer in terms of CS. Of course, net worth won't be going his way. A lot of them are jungle creeps, but here we go. A boast on the front lines. Do I even need to say that? He's always in the front lines. He shouldn't be leading the front line because there's no stun on him. Yeah, can't really get the jump. Ideally, it's Funnick, so Smoke ain't going to fail. That's five heroes wasting their time. Meanwhile, Aki and S4. Puppy's going to find a mid, but is it Puppy who gets caught? Or mid, but S4 just walked into a gank party. Here's your relocate. Here. We go! Oh, Black Hole's still ready to go. The Kuroki's dropping low. Oh my god, hit so hard. Havos trying to find the kill. Meanwhile, Dendi trying to focus on S4. S4 dies again. The relocate goes back out. Lona says, where's my bus home? Where's the bus? Because Dendi is dropping big mail strikes. And Navi are pulling away with this game. Bulldog caught. Bulldog will fall. Triple kill. Dendi looking for more. He got Mel Strike Funnick. Oh, I want to tether away by EGM, but the trap will to hit. No, he will not. EGM will survive. If Navi win this game, they will be the first team in the history of Dota 2 to win two internationals. There's only been two winners. Navi could be the team that takes two in a row. Well, not two in a row, but two total. It's looking closer and closer. They're starting to snowball. They've got more pickoff potential. Alliance, they desperately need their next items. Lotus BKP, the blink for S4, the buyback crushing him. And you look at the gold earned, forget this, because with the buybacks, it's a lot worse. With the heroes they have, they need more gold. Alliance, the giants from the north, from Sweden, are in a lot of trouble. And they're in trouble because Loda, like we said earlier, really used to having a ton of farm. He's on a hero that can't farm that well. But ping out low, they're saying, man, he's only got a drums. He really needs his BKP as soon as possible. Meanwhile, Dendi's got one. There's nothing to stop him. There is not a single ability that can hold him in place. They can slow him down. If he gets off the BKP, all Alliance can do is head for the hills. That yeah. is it. The only thing they have, and this is kind of like a, like a really stretching out there, as a ground target at Sprout. If you could Sprout Dendi within the BKP, he doesn't have anything like a blink to get out. Now, with that said, you have things like Midnight Pulse. You have things like Firefly. Those will easily break the tree. So I don't count on that one being effective against Dendi. Yeah, with a BKB, he doesn't have to fight now. He can Radiant continue to farm. And Na'Vi are going to push the bottom lane. The Dyer tier 1 bottom trying to fortified. trade for the tier 2 top. But Alliance, Dyer's normally on top of these trades, seems attack. like they're going to be on the losing side. Na'Vi, tier 1 will fall. And if they want to defend top, they most likely can. The tier 1 falls. Na'Vi inching closer. Inching closer. Not there yet. No relocates. But we'll see. There's always the threat, right, of Alliance having a big relocate gank, picking Navi off one by one, and rolling from there. So Navi are doing the right thing. Not overextending, not forcing it, playing keep ahead. They're not, they're not afraid to fight, but they'll take their fight selectively. I think Alliance may be angling for a Roshan snipe here. But oh, oh Denny's already on the ball. Traps yeah. at the pit. You ain't gonna pull a fast one on him. Yeah, you talked about having Alliance having the ability to do a gank. I really think they need to reserve their relocate and do counter ganks because Navi is definitely quite far ahead. Perhaps they will be a little bit over aggressive, and if you have a good relocate on top, you could take advantage of uh, Navi's over aggression. But 
that predicates on Navi making a mistake, and so far, they're looking pretty good. Another tower falls. The Alliance, they just kept on rolling in game four. But now, it's Navi who take yet another tower, feeling confident to force fights. When you're up against a superior five man, you normally want to gank or split push, but Alliance, not going for the ganks, not really split pushing that quickly yet. Bulldog working towards the Shadow Blade, but will he be able to get them creeps going their way? Loda wants to go bottom. And all of a sudden, that Havos that had two creeps at like eight minutes, Dyer's look at him now. Talent. He's got He's a Shadow Blade. Attack. Only one point in Greeble's Greed. He's catching up. Alk, one of the best in the business for that. Yeah, then he continued to farm on the top lane. 1,300 gold in the bank. I imagine there's got to be a Blink Dagger. One of Dendi's favorite items, and to be honest, a really, really good item in this game. If you could blink on the back line and focus on EGM or focus on Aki, they just melt in like two hits. Yeah, Dendi, Dendi can go in 1v5 and make this with the BKB and blink and make this a 5v3 instantly by himself. They actually can't kill him before he does it. And here we go. Lions going for Roche, but they're going to back off. It's very tense here. A terrible fight at Roche is probably GG for Navi. Lions are not ready to take that risk yet. There's so much at stake for these teams. Yeah. So much in Navi. They might even go for it. Remember, they've got Acid Spray Max. They got Mel. They've got Mel. Oh, yeah. And they've got the Vision Superiority Dyer's with Firefly. So think I think it. Navi can just take this. Alliance are going to have to fight. No Blink on S4. No Aegis shenanigans easily available. It comes down to a relocate gank. It comes down to Vision. Will they get it? Trance into the pit. Navi bringing down Roche fast. S4 prepping the jump. Firefly's there from Funnick. Not going to let him go in easy. Relocates there. Black, Black hole. hole! Loda gets caught here. Where's the physical damage? There's nothing the black hole gets canceled where is Dendi? puppies dropping the puppies dead but s4 s4 is dead now two men sprawl on top loda still Dendi. whacking everybody away Dendi is still alive they can't stop him egm in a whole world of trouble he's gonna live but the way lies open bulldog tp's in relocate tp with buyback ck's here oh. Dendi, get out of there he wants to fight he wants to fight there's no detection there's EGM, no detection. No, he came no, by his no. own so. Oh, trying to get out to left, but the sun's gonna hit. Oh my god! Gives it in! Blows him up, and now Roshan. How do they fight it? They've used so much to contest this Rosh. The buyback on Wiz, the buyback on CK. Now Funnick wants to go again. Fireflies up. Loda, EGM. If they die again, they've got no buyback. Dendi, oh, monthly forward. Will it matter though? Dendi's here, and Dendi is ready to fight. Roche dropping fast. He's not in the pit. Alliance oh, hanging on. Oh, Ake trying to do something here. Havol's dropping low. Ake's gonna drop as well. And Dendi, he's doing way too much. Nobody's actually focusing him. Dendi, perhaps trying to right click on Loda. Down to about half HP backline here. Admiral Bulldog getting focused. Meanwhile, Dendi is just cleaning house. EGM comes on the right side, trying to help us out. Like Hiroki gets picked off. Flame Breaker on three. Funnix trying to survive. Sprout giving vision. And Admiral Bulldog trying to get a kill on Funnix. Firefly on the low ground. He's gonna be fine. He will have a Blink Dagger up very, very soon. Still Roshan stands. This time, Dendi wants to go in. While that's happening, Batrider's back to the pit. It's low. There's no black hole. Is there a way to steal this? S4 looking to leave. Rosh is low. Can he grab it in time? Dendi backs off. BKB's up on the backside. Funnick falls, but EGM will as well. And now, Roshan, just with a sliver of HP. If Dendi gets this, if he gets this, they might not be able to stop him. Roche, TP back in here. Any fascists? There's a stun on Dendi. Dendi's dropping low. Roshan. Roshan. S4 picks up the ages. Alliance is still in game five. Back in the mid lane, Loda looking for a chase. Puppy barely gets away. Karoki barely gets away. 22 to 19. And Dendi just dropped a beyond godlike streak to S4. Gold heading Alliance's way. Experience heading Alliance's way. Is this the makings of one of the biggest comebacks? Hell, perhaps the biggest in the history of Dota on this stage, in this moment. Can they find a way? S4, he got the Aegis, he got his blink, and now he's moving through the jungle. Kuroki stealing the orb, the waning rift actually, and backing off. Bulldog up to 2.7k gold. Loda, BKB, not that far off. And with no Aegis, can Navi keep on snowballing? There is 3k gold on Dendi. Havos, no item progression at all. Puppy, no BKB. Kuroki, no Blink Dagger, and no Force Staff on Funnick. It seems like Alliance may 
just may have started to turn the tide. They have to keep playing on perfect until the game ends because I believe that Na'Vi has a better lineup walking into this matchup because once Puppy gets his BKB, what is the answer to him? There is no answer. The only answer is to avoid Black Hole or catch him. That is and not a good answer. <laughs> to avoid Tether Black Hole. in reality, Rift. Yeah. That's about it. That's tough. Maybe a Scythe. Puppy, sure, he's got Black Hole, but Alliance do have the superior split push. And we've seen them win so many games at this very event using that style. Bulldog on his Prophet. Once upon a time, Lone Druid was his go-to hero, but nowadays, it seems Prophet just might be it. In comes Funnick, scouting out Dyer's through the river. He's firefly up, attack. looking Bulldog. to leave. He Bulldog. could go on Bulldog. Bulldog, though, Shadow played up and backing off. Na'Vi always wanting to fight. They're going to force one again. Meanwhile, Wisp CK grouped up top. Loda, he's got a BKB recipe now. All he needs is a Mithril Hammer. 1,500 gold, and then he may be able to take some big fights for Alliance. This is a very important push for Na'Vi. They got to keep in mind that there is going to be a relocate coming in, and any second they're going to waste on the bot lane, not getting a tower, is Loda farming up top. So they got to make it quick. If they're ganking, make it quick. If they're pushing, make it quick. If not, just back off. For now, Alliance, as long as they're not getting picked off, Loda is farming, Bulldog is farming, S4 is alive for now and clearing the wave. So they're farming a little bit more than Na'Vi. The gold is dipping their way. It's kind of plateaued for now. Remember, though, they've used a lot more buybacks. And S4 getting towards his next item now. He's, got his, he's already got his blink. Now we'll see what he works towards. A lot of options available for him. What are you thinking, Lumi? Scythe, is this a Scythe, Scythe of Ice? Scythe of Ice is always your go-to option. I don't see anything that could be useful. Things, things like Force Sap, for example, or things like Yule Scepter, they are just not that useful. Maybe if you truly are afraid of Dendi, you could go Gold Scepter for yourself. But I think if you want to win this game, maybe you have to go late, and I think Scythe of Ice is the best option. Yeah, and Scythe of Ice is also a, a play-to-win kind of item. You get a Ghost Scepter, that's a play not to lose. And it feels like if you're just trying not to lose against Na'Vi, they're going to punish you for that. They're going to force fights. And sure, you run, but you're not killing anyone. You're not dealing with Puppy. Radiance bottom I agree. I lean towards the site here. Now they're pushing bottom. The tower will fall. Alliance Radiance still in this game. Still in this game. 24 minutes in. That Roche fight could have sealed their fate. But somehow, some way, using that dire advantage, they found a way. They're hanging on. And now Na'Vi, such a fast start. Can they keep it up? Can they push? the final mile, the last leg of their journey, and take home the, tri the yeah. trophy. Alliance perhaps had some fate going their way with that Roshan. It was bashing, it was bashing Dendi non-stop. But, you know, that's how the crooked combo sometimes, as we see S4 securing that Aegis. Top tower is going to go to Na'Vi as well. And Na'Vi strikes tier two push. back. They take a tier one top, one step closer. The towers are starting to fall in a big way. The territory for both teams that they safely control shrinks, and soon we may have a decisive class. Dendi up to 2.3k gold. Daedalus will be his next destination. It's coming soon. Attack. For now, he saves for buyback, but only for now. And keep an eye on him Dyer's by himself. Even if Loda attack. uses Phantasm, some well-placed side blades can blow him up. But Loda will Radiant get the biggest item for now. It's his fortified. BKB. And now, if anyone for Navi tries to fight on their own, a relocate Radiant's BKB gank, there is no way attack. to deal with it. Navi will slowly push down the top tower there. Not receiving any response just yet. They do see a TP away from the top lane. Havos has TP away. It's time to run. You cannot fight without Havos. BKP gets activated by Loda. Misclick, perhaps? Thought, thought they were going to relocate, I guess. I heard the BKP and I thought he was coming in. Oh, so. Bot lane here, S4 trying to run. And he should be okay. Dyer's dire tower. tower. Dire gets the tier two. Not denied by Navi. That's a 10 second BKP charge. I believe Navi did see it. I'm not 100% sure, but either way, those BKB charges matter. There's they, they do. Sure, there's Black Hole, there's Lasso, there's physical damage from Dendi, but there's a lot of other stuns. Now Havos, a BKB of his own. It seems like Navi have said if we get enough BKBs, there is nothing the Alliance can do to stop us. I do definitely believe that Alliance is right now split pushing a bit better. Um, simply because they have the ability to relocate and join in if S4, for example, ever got in trouble on that bot lane. So he was able to get a tier 2 tower. And I think Na'Vi don't really want to fight until the Aegis runs out. And guess what? Aegis is down in about 24 minutes. Yeah, trap, 24 seconds. Sorry. Trap detonated mid. Gem picked up by your Rubik for Kuroki. BKB for Puppy. This next Roche class will be hotly contested by both teams. For Alliance, they're going to have some big items of their own. S4 might manage to farm a site device. Bulldog will have his, and Alliance will have their shots in this next clash. 
Yeah, I just want to comment on how well Dendi's been map controlling for his team. If you look at the mini map, all those green dots are just Navi's traps all over the place. It, it's scouting Roshan, it's scouting the mid lane. It really helps you to know where that Wisp is, to see if the relocate gank is coming. Also, it helps your bat to find those ganks. And so far, he's perching on the mid lane. Not going to see anyone just yet. If it goes on like this, you have to look at Alliance and say, some of these heroes aren't necessarily that useful in a fight late game. Like, they, they always have the better split push, and we know that. But in a fight, Crystal Maiden, once Navi at Mass BKB, she's not going to do anything. Wisp, sure, a fantastic hero to buff up your carry, but if the enemy team is Mass BKBs and you're not stunning them, then, well, she's just dying to the mass burst damage of Navi. Even a Nature's Prophet, faster farmer than anyone on Navi's side, but doesn't use the items as well in the clashes. S4, Puck, weak against BKBs, relying on the site. Navi, it seems like their heroes will use the farm a bit better. And right now, the farm is still their way. Now a Daedalus, and now we can really say open Dendi. Yeah, it also, now he's gonna hurt. It also depends on how these team fights are going. BKB is nice for that 10 second duration or 9 second duration, but if the team fight goes longer than that, and we definitely saw team fights, the Roshan pick going way longer than that. That Crystal Maiden suddenly Frostbite by S4. Talk about that later. Trying to blink out, he will make it out alive, and he'll jump to the right side as well. S4 says, not today. Not too today. fast, too fast for now. Now a site picked up on your Admiral Bulldog, Nature's Prophet. That's huge. And by the way, he's very close to buyback if he doesn't already have it. In fact, he does. Reliable gold, 1100. Really managing his economy wisely. So Navi, they've got a gem. They've got a BKB Daedalus on Dendi. Four staff blink on the bat. They've got all these items to fight now. Mass BKBs as well. Do they fight? Should they fight? I think they do. When you have BKB Black Hole, Alliance just have to tread carefully. The only thing they have to go against it is an instant stun coming out from a Reality Rift Tether Stun. So your Wisp and CK's relocate have to be on top. So here we go. So they're forcing the tier 2 bottom and they're doing it shortly before Roshan respawn. There's only a few minutes to go. One and a half to two at most. And that means that Alliance will have a harder time contesting this. So instead Alliance says, we don't want to fight against your five man. We're going to rely on our split push. The tier two bottom falls. Navi yet another tower for them. Two remaining for both teams, but If he cancels some TPs, he's on, the, he's on the prowl. Habost may be in trouble. Habost is going to head the other way. Did spot him in his daytime and juke's out. Yeah, when the, when the entire Navi team TPs out like that, anybody that S4 could find is an instant easy kill because you have Wisp as well as Loda coming back in. So you can see how Wisp really is turning the... kind of adding a whole bunch of extra elements in this game. Absolutely. Now Funnick in the jungle, continuing to farm, but here they go. See him. They spotted him out. He's caught. He will be picked off! Just great, great movement around the map. Alliance, these wards are mi just every single ward. They had so Swift many earlier, now they've only got defense. one, but this is what you, when you run Wisp, you don't just pick Wisp and say, okay, we win, Wisp is a good hero, she's too strong, but you run Wisp and you have wards to back it up, you have other gankers to back it up, you move in a way that supports the Wisp, Ooh. and now, well, they you might catch S4. 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 Oh, in he's in face, trouble. Face. The stun in the face. Not, what a player! Not today. What a friggin' player! Not today. But Dendi's on the hunt. He's not giving up that easy. No, uh, he'll back off. Man. By the way, he had no idea that was coming. No vision, no wards to speak of. That was pure reactions from S4. He saw the stun coming and he hit that face shit. And it might sound easy, but trust me, it's not. That earlier kill in the jungle for a bat rider, that's actually a huge deal for Navi because, I mean, if you can't farm your jungle as one of your most survivable hero, a bat rider with blink and a force F, that's that's issue because where do you find? You have to farm as three or four and. Credit to, again, Lions not taking really a, yeah. kind of bad fights. If you look at the experience graph, it's dipped down to zero at this point. Again, if there's nothing really happening, Alliance is the lineup. With the Wisp, they could find a more efficient farm. Navi's going to try to take Roshan once again, but they got burned there last time. Remember, gotta be careful. Puppy does have that BKB, but the, always the Scythe could pose trouble for him. And he's on the high ground. He's in a very bold move. Roche dropping fast. No reaction from Alliance, but they just give this up. They're still not committing. Lasso. Now, they found S4. He's the key to their success in these fights. And he does die. He's got a buyback, but it's too late. Roche is dead. Puppy moving forward. Aegis to Navi. And now it's time to see what they're really made of. They're pushing in mid. And they may just force the high ground. Race flip push coming in from Ammo Bulldog trying to pressure top. I don't, see, I don't know if it's fast enough It's though. not, it's not. Tier 2 is going to drop on the mid lane very quickly. I think Navi, they want to go high ground. They see the victory. They need to claim it. 33 seconds. If they can force out a buyback from Pug, that's an extra. There's a buyback. There you go.
Do they back? They're sticking around mid. They really want to fight. They're going to stay on the high ground. They pop the mech. There's their trap. Deployed. Meanwhile, the Alliance pushing the top lane, pushing the bottom lane, but the tier three mid falls. Navi going for the mid ranks, dropping it fast. Alliance, no sign of wanting to defend. S4 is here. Ake baits out a stun. Navi not finishing the racks yet, but they've lifted S4. He just bought back. If he dies, that could be game. Blinks away. They take the rack. All TP. TP quick right now. S4 is going to try to cancel as many as possible. He'll cancel three. My God. Funnick's going to try to TP, but he's going to defend against every. Everybody. Meanwhile, Loda working on the melee racks on the bot. Reality Rift. Oh, Funic, you are getting stopped hard. He's going to get back out, but the racks in huge trouble. They will defend. Alliance will defend. out maneuvering. Navi have almost taken the racks. Of Rax. Rax. Loda, that's back two. In. That's Karoki. He's dead. Karoki's down. Loda, Alliance, the kings of the Top north. Top lane, Ball, the hex is on Funic. Funic's going to go down as well. Oh, my God. They're doing it! The Alliance is doing it! Two lanes of Rex! It's so hard to come back now. Navi, they've oh, got it. not done yet. Havosi Sloda, can you drop that stun? Oh, EGM. Oh, BKB. BKB! TP! Oh my god! EGM's gonna try to TP as well. We need a Malifus. We will get a Malifus. Navi, not 100% out yet, but they're up against Profit. They're up against Relocate. They're down a rack. The gold, the experience, so even. It comes down to buybacks. It comes down to who pushes faster. You look at the buybacks. Everyone's got one except for S4. He's still dead. He won't have a sight. Man, Lumi, what a play. Three hero dream coil. Wins them two lanes of racks. Without that, they lose a racks and they don't get one. This racks, the tier three had just fallen. The racks was still at full HP. The bottom racks was sitting at three quarters. S4, despite getting completely crushed mid lane, is showing why he's respected as one of the very best, if not the best solo mids in the world. Not necessarily for winning his lane, but for his mid game decision making. It was amazing pressure being played on the both side lanes by Alliance. It forces a quick rotation from Navi, and I think Navi perhaps they panic a little bit. They're saying we need to defend our base, and they TP right in front of the uh, Alliance base. And of course, they got Dream Core canceled, so the Navi cannot make any more mistake this game. Havos invis on the mid lane. He says, "Can we get something going?" They're going here? on Loda now. Oh, Loda, no BKB he's, this time. He's dropping fast. There's a black hole from Ruby. No, there's not. It's on cooldown. Unable to use it. Loda low. Arma toggling on. He's still got BKB. He's baiting this with buyback. EGM's low. EGM. Not dead yet. Loda standing strong. And Blake's funny. Caught by the tether stun. He might end up being in trouble. EGM running, but will get caught. Loda as well. Do Navi go thrown? Do they do it right now? Is it all in? They don't have enough time to throw him right now. Keep in mind that Armor Bulldog pressuring in the bot lane as well. Navi, I think they have to back off. No, they said we want to go in. Havos, no BKB. Nice goal set to blocking the stun, but he gets lifted. EGM. Oh no. Akin, you draw. Oh, what a crit. Dandy on. Loads, but it's bot lane, bot lane. going for the throne. There's no glyph. They must defend. Oh, S4. S4 is going to try to jump to the right side. He won't make it there. But again, Bulldog mm -hmm. trying to get the racks. Puppy's here. He's got to drop the Maleficent. But he has to respect the Hex as well. Admiral Bulldog could just Hex him and kill him. EGM, he's still alive. He's baiting them all. Bulldog still working on those tier four towers. Alliance losing two, but they get one. Gem hits the deck. Still, the creeps pushing in. The base might soon fall. It's coming down to the wire. Bulldog, cat and mouse with Puppy. The tier four is in jeopardy. Navi running out of options. It's a Necro three. It's all in on the push. Oh my god, Rax is gonna go down. We're gonna see a TP from Dendi, and that will drive Emerald Bulldog out of the base. Meanwhile, you see Havos still trying to run. Every buyback being spent on both sides. But look at the damage he did. That's the last tier four. The way to the throne is now open. Admiral Bulldog, Alliance, they find a pick up as well. They found a boss. He BKPs. Does he get out in time? No crits. No crits. He will live. Oh my god. So Navi, they, they can, I, they're out of options here. They gotta force a fight and take Rax very soon. They're not gonna win in a war of split push. They are not gonna war, win in a war of attrition because you have Relocate, you have Profit TP. Oh, look at it, look at it. Boots of Travel and Puppy. He's oh, got BKB, he's got Blink, he's got Black Hole. There, there's no way, there's no way you're gonna like, break two tier four towers before they break the throne because there's just no damage output from Navi.
Yeah, they've got a lot of damage, but things like Mel don't help you against towers. There's no date. There's no desolator on this team. You can't crit on structures. They're not the best lineup to push the base. Alliance, fantastic pushing lineup. Now they're relaxing. They're sitting back. They know the next rush is coming in a few minutes. Pressure's on Navi for Alliance. Farm your buybacks. Wait for the next Roche. If you take the next Roche, you pretty much can just throw bodies at the throne and win the game via that. You gotta keep in mind that also, if you take the Roche on, that will give the Radiant and oh, they have the Glyph already available. So I think perhaps they're trying to angle for a bait. Meanwhile, you see Puppy smoked up in the base. He has a breach of travel. He's looking to join his allies, but it has to be a clean sweep. If you leave Admiral Bulldog, oh. The base. Meanwhile, slow, Radiant steady Radiant siege. Radiant. Two TPs drawn back. This throw. Oh, one micro kills the gem. A little bit of extra gold. Kills the gem. Was there anything? Not gem. The, the, the courier. The courier. Nothing on that courier. It was going to the secret shop. The weasel crow falls. There was nothing on it, but it's just gold, and it's a courier they don't have. By the way, I do want to point out, Admiral Bulldog bought that Necro 3 from the enemy fountain, so that's some next level stuff. It, it definitely was. Uh, all the little team. things, all the little things right now, they matter so much. They're magnified in the big spotlight, in the moment. Navi, backs against the wall. If they can win this game, then they really deserve the title of champions. But right now, Alliance have battled back. It looked to be Navi's game, and yet here they stand. It's not about the kills. It's not about the gold. It's about the throne. And right now, Navi's throne exposed. Alliance is standing strong. Tier 4's up. Glyph is up. And the throne at full HP. I think what Admiral Bulldog's going for with his uh, ultimate orb is going to be a Manta style. Just have as many as many things as you can Split to throw. push, push yeah. as quickly as possible. Throw at the throwing, throw your Necropros, throw your Manta Legion, make Treants. In that one final push that Alliance is going to try to win with, they will try to surround the throne from all sides and siege. Two, two million dollars hangs in the balance. 1.4 million and then some to the winner. Only 600,000 to the loser. Nobody will settle for second place. Who's going to claim it? Who's going to rip it away? We're still waiting. And once this Roche comes, I think we're going to see it decided. Because if Alliance gets that, Navi have to know the chances of a comeback get virtually impossible. Also, Navi's definitely running out of resources. There's no Smoke of the Seed available in their shop. Meanwhile, Alliance has two. So there's a lot of options for Alliance in terms of how they want to angle this. They could take the Roshan. They could force a five-man team fight in the enemy base. Keep in mind that when you have buyback, you could buy back and relocate in. So if you add buybacks, if you add Aegis, and if you add relocate, and if you add teleport buybacks, that's like nine, ten lives that Navi has to deal with. Do they have enough? Alliance, like you said, they, they should have the strategic advantage in a throne race, in a base race. Two lanes broken down, tier four is to fall. But if you're a Navi fan, you must believe in miracles now. You can't count them out yet. They've been in these incredible situations before. Can they find a way? Double load them out. DD, this is very important in a base race. He's going bottom lane. He's got his Phantasm maxed out now. There's a glyph on Navi. They've all got TPs. We also should keep an eye on that and buy to make sure. You gotta keep Everyone on. with TPs. Uh, right now, for Alliance, they don't actually don't have that Dyer's many, but they've got all the TP abilities. Attack. Teleportation, relocate is there. Yeah, they. You also have to keep track of buyback. Hovos has got one. We have one on Rubik and one on Dendi. That's all of Navi's buybacks. Navi, they they felt like they had this game in their grasp. You could sense it. They were confident. Amro, Amro, if he gets caught here, oh, they see him. They know where he is. The or do they? There? No, they no. don't. No wards. Gem out of range. Speaking of which, gem's another important resource, and right now. There is a gem on the side of both teams. S4 carrying run, and I believe it is Funic the other. A Vols picking up Butcher Travel as well. That's definitely the, the item that you want in this stage of the game. Roshan up in 30 seconds. The clock's ticking right now. Navi, they know they have to fight Rosh, and they also know Bulldog's going to come straight for the throne. He's going to go for the juggler. He wants to chop them off at the knees and end this game. They know Loda can relocate in. If those TPs get canceled, if they get caught, they could lose without ever getting to fight. Will S4 be the hero? Will he play that role yet again? He's already been the hero thus far. Can he do it one more time? Yeah, you can see that Navi is trying to gank four three, three man parties, four man card parties. If they find a pickoff, they have more options to do with what they want to do. Not having smoke of the sea at this stage of the game is a huge deal because those ganks are going to be less efficient. It's going to be less reliable as well. But they are definitely pushing out the base. They also have to keep in mind that relocate gank is always an option with CK Wisp. But here comes a big push. 
down the top lane. I really don't think Alliance need to do this. They could just play it slow and go for the Roshan. And, and that's fact, what they're doing. They turn back. They push it past the river as a group, then they back off. They've got the wards. They don't necessarily know that Na'Vi don't have smokes. All these Treants. Damage is damage. Can't let them in. Every little bit. The throne, it does regen slowly, so it will gain back some HP. Dendi cleaving them through. He says, not today. Meanwhile, there are Eidolons at the pit, and that is worth noting is that they can boots of travel to those Eidolons. So in a throne race, Navi have a much inferior option to try and TP around the map, but they do have some ability to move around the map. It's all these little things. I think the best possibility of a throne race is perhaps smoking in through the mid lane and start a fight there. And if Alliance decides to throne race you, you boot your travel back. It's hard to say though. Here we go. Could be a huge class in the river. Oh, Akin, Blink, Malefice as well. He will get caught. He has buyback. It's a Crystal Maiden down. But the push comes top. It's a nice pick for Navi. It's not enough to they, put they this game in the ground. They grass. can't roach. They can't roach. They don't have enough damage. They don't have enough but time. Oh, S4. cancel TP. He's out. Oh, he canceled the beat. Puppy. Puppy. He's not going to be back in the base. He's got BKB, but no boots of travel. Oh, Boy, a lot too. Just so TP as well. They are in now huge the fight trouble. It. Funix caught. Now if they go for the throne, it could be game. Funix down. Alliance are doing it. They need a little more for those to fall. Throw in jeopardy. There's a glyph. It could be their last stand. Dendi's back. He's going to try to focus everybody, but there's so much stuff the hitting on the done. throne. There's no more glyph available. Down to about half HP. A quarter HP. Alliance surrounding from all sides. BKB. They want to do it. Round. They're going to do it. The They're going to do it. The North. Alliance wins. The they win TI3. The Alliance just won. One point four million dollars. They are your international three champions. They have taken home the first ever international for the Swedes. Twenty seconds. How do you feel right now? Uh, it's hard to describe. I, I just can't believe it. Uh, I, 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 I don't have no words. Talk to me about the moment you knew you had grabbed the game back. Oh, sorry. Tell me about the moment you knew you got the game back. Oh my God, it's amazing uh, to beat Navi three to two. Oh my God. Uh, we, we never knew when they, we got the game oh, back. Sorry. It was so close. We were. Oh my God. Oh. What, what do you have to say to these guys who really put up uh, a couple of really great games? A big thank you to Navi. Uh, they are great, great players and persons. Thanks to all the fans, the audience, all the Dota players for making this possible. Thank you. Thank you. James, back to you. One more time for Alliance. Unbelievable. Alliance grabbed the championship, guys. Just 
What a game. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't... It was a magical game to a magical <laughs> tournament. And it was... I, I, like, S4, like, it, the whole team, I have to say, was amazing. But I had notes on S4 here, and I was like, Puck, prior 15, you know, free 15 minutes, terrible laning phase, terrible engagements, S4 isn't handling the pressure right now. And then all of a sudden, at the end, he just made magical plays. It was, I couldn't believe how different it was and just how they stepped up in the moment. That was just amazing. The way he just, like, it's something so simple. He cancels TPs, but... <laughs> Someone called it the million dollar puck out. Uh, and it really was. That was amazing. Yeah. He jumped in. I think he got three or four TPs cancelled. The first time? Yeah, yeah. the first time. Mm -hmm. And then the second time around, which was like where the throne fell, two TPs right on the money. Oh my god. Uh, spectacular. I don't know what to say about this game. I'm just like, I ran in here thinking Navi had it in the, in the back because I was sitting yeah. be between yeah. the audience. Then S4 happened at Roshan and... Well, that, that was, was actually Admiral Bulldog, I have to say, because Admiral Bulldog, he took down the um, refraction, the refraction charges, charges right. with Trian. That was ridiculous. That, that was where I was running into the hall, oh, maybe, because yeah, I was like, oh, Navi just won. Him. Yeah, it was like, Admiral <laughs> Bulldog was, I think overall that game probably one of the most solid players, the m solid decision makings. He was so good. And also EGM was absolutely fantastic. Okay, the whole team was amazing. But that moment when that happened, I was like, this is not meant to happen. There's n this is not meant to happen. And S4 gets the, um, gets the Aegis. And then he died in like a yeah. matter of a second. Then he actually had over 3,000 gold on him at the time. If he had bought anything, that fight would have gone completely differently. And... But I mean, I can't fault Dendi for this play. He was 17 and 2 at one point, totally carrying Navi. And Havos at 1v4 on the bottom. Oh, wow. Come on. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> and just to think about how good you have to be at decision making when you know that Navi are ahead. And when they come to your base, you cannot defend. So you're like, well. Let's base trade. Let's, Two racks yeah. for one. Two melee racks. Like, you, they shouldn't have been able to do that. It, the Navi didn't see it coming, otherwise they would have reacted I mean, better. S4 no got one picked expected. Off. He yeah. got picked off before, so Navi had a huge advantage going into that. Yeah, S4 was just, like, messing with a man. He was like, look how bad I am. <laughs> oh, no, I've died. <laughs> and then uh, they're like, oh, we've just killed S4. Let's just take the... And then he buys back, and he's like, only joking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was it's, uh, amazing. And but how amazing is also Admiral Bulldog, when they got the Raxis, uh, just buying that Necro 3, putting all the pressure there, hiding with the Enigma. Uh, all the team was amazing. Yeah, well, yeah. we have to also give it up to Na'Vi. It takes to have a great champion, you need a great competitor, and that's exactly what they were. And we're going to go to a, a Casey with an interview. The runners up, it's Puppy from Na'Vi. What Puppy requests? I deliver. He wanted to sit down. But we, we're not going to No, we're not. No, no. Yeah. How, how, how are you doing? That was still such an exciting few games to watch. You guys did an amazing job. It was quite crazy games, I got to agree. It was probably the most intense grand final I've ever played. And they showed some crazy games, right? Of course. <laughs> yeah. Of course. What was most surprising to you, the way that the games went? Uh, most of the games had uh, to be mo most likely a stomp. I think uh, the one that gets the advantage is going to go roll with it. Um, so we lost first game, second game we won with a stomp, third game also it was it was kind of even, but we always had the upper hand somehow. And the fourth game was also a little bit fail of us. They kind of started snowballing us. We thought we were stronger maybe at the pushing bottom lane. And then we can, you know, take the game back. Fifth game was pretty much an even Steven. Crazy all around, you know, moves and stuff. You know, there's we had a lot of luck in this tournament and that's, you know, Alchemix getting first bloods and double kills and stuff was absolutely lucky, I guess, for us. And uh, yeah, crazy. Very crazy and so many people such huge fans of yours watching at home on streaming and out there in the hall. What do you have to say to them? Uh, I love all of my fans. I give them autographs all the time and I can stay as long as in the booth as I can, as humanly possible. And uh, let's say I love Dota too. Thank you so much. Con two things that I love right now. And congratulations, you guys came such a long way. It was great to see you guys back, and thanks for being so so nice and generous with your time with me this time. I've enjoyed getting to know you. Uh, 
you know, I, I appreciate, you know, you're a Dota fan probably, aren't you? I am now. You are now? <laughs> yeah. Of course, so you're connected to Dota, everything I like already. You know? <laughs> I don't even care if you're like something. Uh, I'm not going to even go. No, no, you know, I think we should send it back to James. Now would be a good time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Casey. And Puppy, stop trying to mess her throws up. Um, I think Puppy, he, generally, he actually seems pretty cool about it. I think he actually enjoyed the fact that it was a great finals. Like, Puppy is just a lover of Dota in terms of strategy, plays, tactics. And I think Alliance, of course, they pushed him to the limits, and I, he enjoyed it. And he also said, you know, the, the team that took the advantage would normally win, but that wasn't the case on the last game. I don't want people to, to get this the wrong way, but Navi and Puppy is like the greatest losers. Last year we saw them <laughs> lift <laughs> Ferrari up and, and just s celebrate th their victory with them. And this time around, like, what great sportsmanship. I'm just so impressed by Navi's uh, heart in the game and, and how Puppy is able to, to sit down with Casey afterwards and be like, I love Dota, I love my fans, I love everything about this game. It's, it's just so admirable. Yeah, and we're going to get Casey to join us on the panel before we say goodbye tonight. But before we do, let's also take a look at some of the highlights of game number five between Alliance and Na'Vi. And here you can see, this is the split push. And there you go, it's three, three people yeah. interrupting.